Hello there, this is Randy Cross, and this is Unsafe Spaces. Thank you for joining us. Uh, appreciate it very, very much. want to remind you, as we tape this show, um, it is President's Day. President's, as in the United States, uh, President of. Uh, no matter what your affiliation is, use that old Google machine, pick a president, and look one up. You'd be amazed. You might actually, like, learn facts. Facts are in short supply at times, but learn some facts about a president. All right. Uh, later on in the show, uh, I, I'm going to be talking with Charles Davis. Charles is a uh, football analyst with Fox. He's covered everything there is to cover from the standpoint of football, from college football to Super Bowls to doing playoff games. He gets around pretty good. Charles is a real, real good man. want to talk to him not only about the end of the NFL season, the college football season, maybe a little Alliance of American football talk, but also a little NFL draft. So Charles Davis in just a bit, but first a little commentary. Yeah, we've had some stories in the news, and you've seen them. Uh, they start out as a certain story, then suddenly it turns out there's a whole different story. You get the police involved. You get in investigations involved. Um, I give you some some examples. Um, there's a 9/11 survivors fund, obviously, right? With everybody going to get their money that has cancer and was out there. Well, now there's a problem. Now they're trying to say we'll pay 70 percent or we'll pay 40 percent or whatever of the remaining claims. We got a former vice president in Europe apologizing for the United States. We've got all the stuff around the border. I just call it sort of a border fact war that goes on. Now, this story has hung around now for a while. Uh, now that the actual facts have come out, you may see a lot less of it in the news as they kind of come to gr grind to justice. But um, I will just remind you, <clears throat> my old teammate, Freddie Solomon, these words right here. Be better. Everybody involved, hell, everybody out here, just be better. And be a little damn nicer to each other, too. That would go a long way. All right, let's head now to the interview section of the show, where we'll be joined by Charles Davis of Fox Sports. All right, here we go with the interview section of the show. And uh, joining us now, as promised, is Charles Davis of Fox Sports. He of formerly a lot of college football, now NFL and playoff games. He seems to be everywhere. Charles, welcome. How you doing, Randy? It's good to talk with you again. Ah, well, thank you. Yeah, I appreciate it very much. Um, what were your general impressions on the 2018 NFL season? What, what should fans kind of remember this year for, do you think? Oh, boy, a few things, Randy. Number one, we got the focus back on the game instead of, you know, so much discussion. And I don't say it was discussion that shouldn't be had or wasn't warranted. But I think for, for, for fans overall, when you have the chance to just talk ball every week, they feel better. You yeah. know, it's just, hey, yeah. we just go to the water cooler. Did yeah. my team win? Did my team lose? How'd my fantasy guys do the yeah. whole thing? And, and the ratings um, numbers look better. The ra ratings numbers were better that way. But I think the ratings numbers were better in addition because we always talk about quarterbacks and the so-called lack of quarterbacking in the league. And we had some exciting quarterback play last yeah. year. And it was and it was the old guys that you would expect, the Bradys, the Breezes. And it was the young guys coming along, the Mahomes, the Goffs. And all in between. And offense became the key to everything in this in this year, didn't it, Randy? I mean, we talked offense, oh, yeah. offense, offense. And then we remembered at the end of the year that defense was played as well. So I thought we had the best of all worlds this year. And, and again, I'm not saying any off-field discussion is not warranted because I think a lot of it is. But I think for people who love football, when you have the chance to just talk ball first – they like that better. Yeah, you know, how ironic was it? You talk about, you know, like that great game between the Chiefs and the Rams, you know, <laughs> 54 to 51. And a year that included that and a year that included all those passing numbers and touchdowns by Mahomes and everybody else, we end the year with a 13 to 3 Super Bowl. <laughs> 
back to the That's back so to funny. the future. It's like suddenly we're back at the the, the seventy two Dolphins and the Redskins and the L A Coliseum. <laughs> That is so funny you bring that up because that is that's so true. And I think of that seventy two game, I'm not sure Bob Greasy for the Dolphins threw it ten times. No, probably not. In the entire game. Yeah. You know, it was Zonka, it was Kick, it was Mercury Morris. They built a fourteen nothing lead and probably would have pitched a shutout, save for the Gero your premium block field goal, tried to throw the ball, Mike Bass picks it off <laughs> in the air and takes it back and it's fourteen yeah. seven. But you know, the Dolphins thoroughly dominated the game overall. But you're right. And I really think that the pendulum started to swing a little bit, Randy. After that fifty four fifty one game, we ended up having that Thursday night where New Orleans and Dallas played, and New Orleans was the hottest team in the league at the time, and Dallas held them to 10 points and beat them 13-10. Yeah. And I thought, okay, yeah, we can play defense in this league. It's still evident. It's still out there. But you're right. For most of us, we all expected a game at least in the 20s with New England and, and, and uh, the Rams. At least in the 20s. And we end up with the game that we got, which I thought was a fine game. I think for other people, oh, it was the worst Super Bowl. It was boring. It was this. And I was like, that game was 3-3 at one point. Tension building. Every drive meant something. These defenses had to play well. I was all in on it. And I know most people are like, yeah, it was awful. It was terrible. And that's probably because we set the expectation of 54-51. Yeah. <laughs> I'm an offensive guy. I like to see points and yards yes. and excitement and, you know, sacks and picks and all that fun right. stuff. All but, the fun stuff. But that's just you me. Know, yeah, and listen, you're not, you're not alone. And I think most people feel the same way you do. And I thought we would get defensive play in a game that involved everything that you talked about. You know, in a lot of ways, the year before, we got that, didn't we? Oh, yeah. With Philadelphia and New England. Because that game had everything you wanted and thrills, chills, and spills on offense. But what decided the game ultimately? A defensive pass rush that knocked the ball out of Tom Brady's hands and allowed Philadelphia to go up eight points. Yeah. So, yeah, you know, you had everything you were looking for with one big defensive play that changed the course of it. This one, it was a lot more defense, and then New England put together finally the one offensive drive that broke the game open. You know, as, as you'd expect, and because it happens in every era, when you get a dominant team, on the opposite side of that are the fans and the people in the game that say, well, anybody but these guys. We want to see anybody win but New England. We want to see anybody win but Pittsburgh, anybody but Dallas, anybody but San Francisco. San Francisco pick, yeah. pick your pick your era. It always happens that way. Now, on the college football side, how come we don't hear that too often with the Alabama-Clemson situation? Because right now, that's looking to be, you know, and I know you're not there on a regular basis anymore, right. but I know you also kind of keep your foot in that water. But oh, yeah. why don't we hear that? very often about that being just a, a game that right now is dominated by two teams. Yeah, that's a good point. And I think part of it is college football is a lot more regional and structure than the NFL. The NFL is truly across the board national. So when you end up with Clemson and Alabama taking on each other every year, it seems like now down the stretch at some point, there is some of that discussion, but because it's so regional, the Pac-12 fans are like, eh, we're not even watching anymore. You know, eh, who cares? You guys deal with that. The NFL is a little more of a different thing because it's in your face every week. And the Super Bowl itself is a national holiday that we just haven't declared yet. You know, every, right. everybody's tuning in on that one. The college football playoff, you kind of tune in if you feel like it. If you love college football, you're watching. But if there's two teams that you're, you're tired of watching, eh, you kind of check out. And no one has, and I shouldn't say no one. But you don't hear about the holiday party on Monday night to watch the college football playoff. Everybody coming over, hey, got a spring. You right. just don't have it. It's not the same Like you event. say, regionally that might happen, regionally. but nationally yeah, that yeah. doesn't happen. No. Look, the Clemson Alabama fans, they were just upset they had to travel all the way to California for this one. Yeah. They would have said, hey, why, why don't we just play this in Atlanta? <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, <laughs> I, 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 I did hear hot comments from people out there in the Bay Area that yep. were like, well, how come our stadium's not like this when our when the Niners play in this thing? Because that stadium yep. was electric. That was really it was. fun. It's got well, some, it's, it's got something to do with the product, folks. It it, it does. The product <laughs> and those fan bases support their programs like yeah. crazy. I mean, Randy, you 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 know all about both of those programs because of where you're based and you have your foot in both both worlds too. But you also know that Clemson for years prior to this run 
thought of themselves, carried themselves, their fan base thought of themselves the same way. Truly is an SEC team. Yeah. That just wasn't playing in the SEC. The fan, the fan support was there. The, the, the athletic, the ability to get talent was there. The way that they looked at themselves, anytime they had a chance to play an SEC team, they were fired up for the whole, the whole competition. But for years, they didn't crack the code because, you know, in the ACC, they had to go through Florida State for so long. And that was difficult for them to do. And they couldn't quite get it. Tommy Batten had a good but not great. And this guy, Dabo Sweeney, comes along. And they, you know, they're like an SEC team totally now. They don't rebuild. They reload. That fan base, which has always been there, has a chance to really ch- stick their chest out now and be the top bully on the block and say, you got to come get us Paul. now. And their facilities... Oh, my God. They are off the charts. Like, anywhere you want to go with facilities, Clemson can step up and say, ours is as good as anyone. Oh, theirs is 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 amazing. It is is phenomenal what they do. And and they play a fun style of ball. They're fast-breaking on offense. The defense comes after you, gets after you, the whole deal. And what I was most impressed by was this year with Randy. You remember that defensive front four all had a chance to go out in the draft last year. Oh, yeah. And all of them came back. And you know what our worry is, right? When all those kids say they're coming back, do they come back and play a year like Jadevi and Clowney did at South Carolina, mm-hmm. where you don't play all out, you play to protect yourself, and you understand why, yeah. but you don't get the best for your team, or like, or like, Ed, or like Ed Oliver at Houston, right? Ed Oliver at Houston. But guess what? We got we got kids who came to play, wanted yeah. to win another national championship, and they did, and that was really impressive to see. Are you looking forward to this draft coming up? It's going to be a fun – it starts on April – it's April 25th, 26th, 27th. And the fun yeah. thing for me is I know it's been moving around for a while, but this year it's going to be in Nashville. And yes. this seems like a pretty good matchup. I think it's a great matchup. Do you remember last year when, when the Titans revealed their new uniforms? Oh, yeah. And they took it downtown for the reveal? And it was a monster event. And you're talking about this is just what they're going to wear in a game, guys. OK, and everybody <laughs> turned out for the whole thing. And I talked to a couple of people in the NFL and they said, you know, that event did help swing the swing the tide for them. That that event showed us that people will turn out. And if they're going to turn out for a uniform reveal, you know, they're going to turn out for the NFL draft. Oh, yeah. So so that's going to be a fun, fun time. I'm looking forward to it. I remember when they started moving the draft around, Randy, I was like, OK, this is going to be interesting what they do. Chicago, first couple of years. Philadelphia, one year, was off the charts. Yeah. They moved it to Dallas. Dallas went ahead and eclipsed it, as Dallas typically does. Yes. And guess what? We're going to have we're gonna have another big event in Nashville. So I'm excited about it. I think it's great for the fans of the NFL to all get a piece of this thing. Yeah, it is. It, it's going to be an epic, especially from an entertainment standpoint. You're going to see oh, yes. the country stars. You're going to see the, all the music stars. It will be a huge, huge well, event. Listen. You, you and I ought to go in a week early and, and make sure we're on every one of those invite lists somehow, some way, <laughs> because those stars, the show they're going to put on, and yeah. a lot of them are big football fans or big sports fans. So it's not just you know them making an appearance and leaving. They're going to revel in it, and they take pride in the fact that Nashville's their home. And they'll be welcoming people in. Yeah. So, you know, we, we need to get in there and see if Tim McGraw and Faith Hill are going to put on a deal or, you know, is Carrie Underwood going to do something for us and, and just and just keep rolling right on down the line because I'm yeah. there. I want to do it. Listen, I want you and I to go to the old Ryman Auditorium. Oh, all yeah. Can. I want to go there. I want to go to the new place. I want to go to every, every, every bar and hockey talk. I want to go to all of them and see all those shows. And the good, the good thing, for, and the good thing about that, Charles, it's just research. It is. That's all it is. It's all research, <laughs> and it's part of the job. And by the way, I bet you Garth shows up. Oh, oh yeah. Are you kidding me? I will bet you he me? shows up because he is a he loves ball. So I bet you that he shows up, and he and his wife Trisha. So let's do this thing. Hey, la- last question for you. We found out last year that a six foot or maybe slightly under um, <laughs> quarterback can be the number one pick in the draft and have a yeah. successful rookie year. Can a five foot nine quarterback replicate that coming out of the exact same program? He can if you're going to build around him and make it possible for him. Look, those those inches don't seem like a whole big difference. Mayfield is a is a stout six foot, six foot one. 
This kid's a little slighter, but a lot faster. What I'm watching, Randy, when I see tape, I do see him make those out of the pocket. Not to the same extent that Russell Wilson did coming out of Wisconsin. Right. I think that was kind of underrated about Russell. But still, you'll see some of them, and you'll see some of those highlights that roll. There's one in particular I was watching. I forgot who they were playing, but it's shown from his perspective from behind him. And he makes a throw, and we use the term throwing a guy open way too often. Yeah. Okay, we, we, we've, we've blown it out of, among, out of the water. Among, among other terms. Yeah. Around, among other terms, right? But he throws one to a spot and lets the receiver go get it from dead in the pocket. So, yeah, he, he knows how to find sight lines. I mean, Breeze managed to do it well. Um, obviously, Fran Tarkenton did it through his career. They've done that their, their whole life. They, You know, he's always been short. It's not like he went from 6'5 down to whatever. So he knows how to play the game. And it's going to be a very interesting deal to see just how high he goes. Because right now, sitting at four, the Raiders have three first-round picks. And you and I both know John Gruden and quarterbacks is a love affair that's always unrequited. <laughs> and he has the final authority on the draft. <laughs> Look out. Yeah, it is, it could, that's it true. It very well happen. That is true. That is true. Hey, Charles, thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it, as always. And best of the, luck to you when it comes to the draft and everything this offseason. Thanks a lot, Randy. It's always great talking with you. Best of you and your family. We'll talk soon. I'm All sure. right. Hey, by the way, Kevin yes. Carter, Nashville. Yes. KC is connected up there. We'll, we'll get him to get us in those joints. KC is totally connected up there. I mean, <laughs> things, don't move, things don't move in Nashville unless they call KC first. So I'm with you. <laughs> All right, Charles. Thanks. Be good. All right. Bye-bye. Well, thank you to Charles. Now we're pretty caught up from the football standpoint. Let's move on to other sports, as in unsafe spaces sports. And a golf tournament, as there seems to be every single week, leads off on Safe Spaces Sports. Uh, the Genesis Open, which used to be the Northern Trust for about nine years, and then for about 25 years before that, it was the Nissan. Uh, it's at Riviera Country Club, one of the most beautiful golf courses there, are, there, there is on the planet. Uh, yes, it's right by the ocean. No, you can't see the ocean. Okay? But it is absolutely gorgeous, and it's extremely hard. And it was extremely wet, as you saw at times this weekend. Um, Justin Thomas led the tournament for days, weeks, it seemed, at times. Uh, But he spit up that lead, including a nice shank uh, on the fourth hole on Sunday. But the winner, J.B. Holmes, who maybe after this weekend should further be known as the one-man rain delay. Because this guy is methodical which is a nice way of saying he takes freaking forever to hit a ball, whether it's going in the air or rolling on the green. This guy brings a whole new term to slow. Okay, now if you like slow, but you're a fan of heights, okay, check out Hamadou Diallo. Slam dunk contest. Now he led off a little bit with a preview during the slam dunk. They bring him up. He shows his jersey. He does the... You know, the Superman thing, the Cam Newton kind of spread deal. Um, But it was how he jumped and how he dunked that was the most impressive of all. Now, you can jump over a plane or you can jump over a car or you can jump over a shack. Now, I don't mean a S-H-A-C-K or a shed, S-H-E-D. I mean a shack as in S-H-A-Q. Yeah, seven Man, foot two. Shaq. First he told me, Check this out. Me, so he that, doesn't look uh, real confident, does he? Now he did use his hand. I don't know if it helped him. They had a little boost, but that's a big old shack to be jumping over. That's kind of some fun stuff. Uh, Our third and last story here when it comes to sports was the Daytona 500, the great American race. And as usual, 
It was a great race, start to finish. Now, I know not everybody has seen it. Some people have DVR'd it. I'm going to warn you up front. I will ruin some of this for you. Okay? Get over it. Um, it was fun. They had the old rubbing. They had some racing. They had some wrecking. And then they had, well, you can't call this wrecking. How about anarchy? How about chaos? How about how many lives looked like they were in danger when this happened? Oh, oh no, 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 no. And everybody. Good oh, no. Are you kidding me? This is big. Wow. But it. <laughs> Paul Menard. Yeah, Paul Menard. Given. Pretty nice push down the back straightaway. The heck to, with Paul Menard. How about number 10, gets Amarillo, right the way rear. he gets Oh, smacked. yeah, that just starts to turn him yep. a little bit. Got him in the right rear. Got him. Yeah. And he collects Menard. Collects. Yeah, Logano just misses it, but the whole outside lane and half the inside pile up. And, and this is exactly what we were just talking about at this stage in the race. Amarillo right there on the wall, number 10. victory in the Daytona 500. You want to see that checkered flag. He and last you'll do year, right anything to get it. End of the race. Hamlin off turn Watch number four. But Denny goes Hamlin side for the by second time the in four this years. Time. Denny Hamlin wins his second Daytona 500 and wins it for Coach Gibbs in Toyota. In the wow. Air. What a day for J.D. Gibbs. He for died last month from a neurological disease. Team president and co-founder with. Yeah, great deal. Uh, Gibbs, Joe Gibbs and his family. Condolences again on the, the death of your son. But what a great family environment and family company Joe Gibbs Racing is, and they get a big win at the Daytona 500, which is they they lead off with the Super Bowl. So for the second time in four years, Joe Gibbs' race team has won the Super Bowl. Congratulations. All right. How about uh, a little Wambulance and our little Wambulance Diddy by Chad Prather? You better grab your blanket and just squeeze it real tight. These people need to get a real life. Okay, there's a podcast out there. It's called Rant Nation uh, with Graham Allen. And I'm not really going to comment much. I just want to run this and let you know that some of the simplest things out there aren't really simple anymore. And that kind of just tees Graham Allen off. Reports are coming out of Wayne County that the first all-girl Boy Scout group is forming what the all girl boy scouts all girl boy scouts um wouldn't that be called a girl scout i just want to understand you i don't understand millennials liberals do you have any idea what it's like to go through life and have no idea what's going on nothing says we want to be included into the boy scouts Hence, changing the name to Scouts, like having an all-girl, all-female leader Boy Scout troop. Riddle me this, riddle me this. What do you call an all-girl Boy Scouts? You call it the Girl Scout! <laughs> Graham is losing his mind. Obviously, he has not gotten the 15 gender memo. But that's for another time. Let's go now to our feel-good story of the week. Hey, on top of the world. All these feel good stories are a lot of fun. I uh, want to show you one here from the dodo, and this ha involves a pit bull, and she's been through a lot but she's found her perfect family. And from this story, uh, the only thing I'll ask is, is this a story about a rescue dog or a rescue family? Happy birthday yeah, to you. you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Storm. Happy first adoptiversary. We hope you have the most special day filled with all your favorite things because we love you so much. It's 
been quite the year. We've had so many ups and downs together. <laughs> Since we first saw your photo and brought you home with us. You felt like family right away. And we can't believe you haven't been here all along. Anxiety broke our hearts. Come on. Good girl. And there's so much we wish you could tell us. But you managed to communicate a lot. No. <laughs> without saying a word. And watching you come out of your shell. Get spoiled like a princess and just learn to be yourself has been our greatest joy. We made so many new family traditions, like morning dance parties, hikes in the mountains, and family naps. We all made some mistakes, but you've shown us so much kindness incredible strength and you're the funniest girl we're so amazed by you that even though you were abandoned you still know what family means and we're so grateful you chose us as yours all right Thank you to the Dodo for uh, bringing that story to light, as they do with so many other fantastic stories, uh, specifically about animals and their humans. Hey, I want to thank you very, very much for joining us this week. I want to remind you kind of where to find us and where to tell people to find us. Uh, UnsafeSpacesUSA.com, RandyCross.com. You can find us on Twitter, iTunes, SoundCloud, Facebook, Instagram, we're out there. If you have any suggestions on stories or comments about shows, it's producer at unsafespacesusa.com. Time now just to say thanks, see ya, and happy trails.